CAMP is an acronym that stands for the Coalition of Applied Modeling for Prevention. And we are a team of academic researchers that develop and utilize different types of models to answer public health questions. CAMP is really unique in that it's a collaborative effort at multiple levels. So there's researchers such as myself that do a lot of uh, epidemic modeling, simulations, mathematical modeling, um, and it provides us an opportunity to work with policymakers as well as policy implementers so that we can tailor the things that we're doing to answer the questions that are most salient to them. One of the key features that we focused on was the need to incorporate public health advisors, people who were working directly in public health at state and local jurisdictional levels to advise the modelers and CDC about what are the burning questions they have? What are the things that are most important to them to model? As a public health advisory group member, I love working with CAMP in a way that it increases synergy across jurisdictions. So you get the chance to look at commonologies that may be occurring across regions that you wouldn't hear if you didn't have that opportunity. A lot of times when we think about equity in terms of access to care or even outcomes, but when you have researchers come together and boots on the ground, subject matter experts, give them input on thoughts and directions where to go with research, something really magical happens. The CAMP project really allowed us to ask questions of public health consequence in different ways. So what we're really interested in is the behaviors that may incur risk for certain infectious diseases. And if we think about it from a prevention point of view, we're interested in knowing how many people do we need to serve? What's the size of the population that we need to reach with services? And so the MSM denominator work took a scientific approach of using multiple sources of data that ask about sexual practices and sexual identity and really combining them using statistical methods to come up with estimates that could be delivered at the state level, could be delivered at the county level. The primary charge that we had was to come up with estimates of the number of men who have sex with men who live around the United States. This is a, a high priority risk group for several disease areas that NCHHSTP works with, particularly HIV and sexually transmitted infections. We were able to come up with disease rates for HIV and sexually transmitted infections around the United States because we were able to use those as denominators for the calculation of rates. This let us make new maps, which gave us really tremendous insights into the burden of disease among communities of men of sex with men around the United States. Right now in the United States, about 13% of those that are currently living with HIV are unaware of their status. And so in order to actually reach those goals of 90% reduction in infections by 2030, we need to get those individuals that are currently unaware of their status tested and so we can get them on treatment. So I've been looking at different opportunities to get those individuals tested. We've been doing a lot of modeling around testing in uh, clinical settings. We're also currently doing a new study where we're evaluating the potential impact of uh, self-tests and if we could distribute self-tests to individuals who perhaps are not testing uh, in other venues, what impact that might have on you know, getting those people screened. Once they become aware of their diagnosis, we can get them on treatment and prevent future infections. Here in the United States, hepatitis B and hepatitis C are actually quite common infections. Every year, tens of thousands of people are infected with hepatitis B or hepatitis C, and several thousand people die. So for hepatitis C, we have treatment that can cure people of infection. And importantly for hepatitis B, we have a vaccine that is very safe and very effective at preventing new infections. So the recommendation in 1991 was that newborn infants be vaccinated against hepatitis B. And over time, we continued to add additional groups to this recommendation. And so we looked at that and we decided to ask the question, have we come as far as we can with these risk-based recommendations? And that really led to the creation of this question and this project. And we decided to develop a model that could help us answer that question. And so we presented our analysis and we provided modeling results indicating that this could be a cost-effective approach for averting future hepatitis B infections. 
The impact of CAMP, I think, has been diverse. Certainly it has impacted guidelines, clinical guidelines that are put out in public health practice, but also the impact on individuals who are working at local and state health department levels. So I think part of the next frontier for CAMP and for public health is to figure out how we use tools to really help people understand the context in which they're living the ways in which the place they live may shape their health opportunities um, and their health risks. So I think we want to use all these tools to generate high quality data and then present them in ways that people can engage with and can use that information to understand the context of their own health and what they can do to, to be healthy.